Hello, and welcome to this overview of the new Azure DevOps repository support for Terraform Cloud and Terraform Enterprise. To start, we'll take a look at our Azure DevOps project. This project, named TFE Test, has all of the basic configuration set up already, including a README, some repositories, and such. If we take a look at the list of repositories, you can see there are several already created here within the project. Now let's flip back to Terraform Cloud. The first thing we need to do to configure this integration is go to our settings, VCS providers, for the organization that we've chosen. We'll click Add a VCS provider and select Azure DevOps Services from the drop-down list. You can see there are several pieces of information that are required here. In order to obtain those, we need to go to Azure DevOps into our profile and create a new application. You need to fill in some specifics about your application, including the company name, an application name, and an optional brief description. You'll also be asked for an application website and an application callback URL. Now this callback URL can be uh, example data for the moment, and we'll fill it in later. Select code read and code status only as your authorized scopes, and click create application. You can now see that you have the required information for the Terraform VCS provider, including your app ID and client secret. Copy the app ID and paste it in the Terraform VCS provider. Then you can return to the application, open your client secret, which is a longer string, copy this and paste it in the appropriate field as well. Click Create VCS Provider, and you'll get the saved dialog. You can then obtain the callback URL from this screen, which you can place into the Azure DevOps authentication application. So click Edit, and replace that example URL with this new authorization callback URL. Save your application, and you're now ready to return to Terraform where you can click Connect Organization. This will actually establish the link between ADO and Terraform Cloud. Accept the authorization dialog, and you'll be returned to Terraform with a success dialog that shows you that your link was created. Now we can create a workspace. Workspaces are linked to VCS providers, so you need to choose your new provider, pick the Azure DevOps one you just created, and you can now see a list of all the projects and repositories that are present within Azure DevOps. We'll choose this Terraform random one, give our workspace a name, and click Create. This will create the workspace and download the initial configuration. Once that initial config download is complete, we'll want to queue a plan. This will execute a run against that configuration and actually create some resources. And you can see if we look at the main.tf for this particular repo, we're just creating a random string with a byte length of 20. So it's going to be a 20 character random string. Going back to Terraform, we can see the plan is running and we need to confirm it. So let's go for it and confirm plan. And that'll go through and actually run the apply, which will create that resource and that'll output that random string of 20 characters in length. All right, finished. Now that we've done that first run, we can see that it's been successfully applied and we can go make a change to this file directly. So we'll edit this within the master branch directly at first. We'll update that to 32. So we're gonna change our string length from 20 to 32 and we'll commit that change directly to the master branch. Now this will invoke a new run in that Terraform workspace. So we can see here that it's now planning. So that change was picked up and Terraform is now planning that new uh, resource, which is going to change the length from 20 to 32. And we can see that the resource is going to be recreated because of that length change. So we confirm and apply this run as well. Longer strings are better and confirm. 
Now this will actually go through and apply, and the output will be a new, longer, random string. And that's finished. Now there's also the uh, flow for creating pull requests as opposed to committing directly to master. So to test that, we'll create a new branch, and we'll just call that our demo branch, and that's going to replicate the master branch. And now that we have that branch, we'll go into it and we'll make a new change to that main.tf, same file. But in this case, we're going to update that byte length from 32 to 40. So now we'll have an even longer string and we'll change that to 32 to 40 bytes. Wow, awesome. And we'll commit that. But this won't be picked up right away because we need to create the pull request first. So we'll create that pull request And now I'll be presented with the opportunity to approve or complete this. Uh, we'll start off by actually approving it first, because that will give us speculative plans here that show up in the Azure DevOps UI. And clicking on those will forward us directly to our Terraform workspace, where we can see the proposed plan that would execute if this was committed. So we can see that this is going to be uh, another replaced resource. We're going to increase the length. But we can't actually apply these speculative plans. In order to do so, we need to pop back to Azure DevOps, and we'll complete this pull request uh, by merging it. So we'll say merge this PR, change from 32 to 40 bytes. And that pull request is now completed. So that's all done. And if we go back to Terraform and look at our workspaces, we'll be able to see that that new merge is now running a new plan. So that's in the planning phase now. If we take a look at it, we can see that this resource is also going to be replaced. I'm going to upgrade it from 32 to 40 bytes, an even longer, better string. So we'll confirm and apply. Absolutely. 40 bytes is totally insane. All right, cool. And that apply will run through. And once again, that resource will be uh, destroyed and recreated with a new, longer length. So when this finishes, we should see that new 40-byte random string. And there it is. Now that this run is completed, I'd also like to review module creation. So we can import modules directly from Azure DevOps as well into our private module repository. Now that we've got that provider created, we can browse it. We can see any repo that matches the module pattern and import a module from it. So we have two uh, repositories containing modules within Azure DevOps. And here you can see all the information, the readmes, the inputs, the outputs, all of the information that was published in the repo for this module. And we'll take a look at that repo here. So here we go is our module. And in this case, we've defined a main TF, an outputs file, a variables file, the readme that actually populates the private module repository. Uh, and then there's also uh, in the history for this specific repository, a tag that specifies the version. So if we look at the commit history, we can see here, we've tagged this as version 1.0.0. That actually specifies what version will be shown in the private module repository. I hope you've enjoyed this overview and that you'll take advantage of this feature very soon. Thank you.